welcome back my friends to your channel today we are going to talk about the server room we are going to see a real server room from inside uh, but before we start i would like to apologize in advance uh, for the uh, background voice that's uh, coming uh, from the fans uh, of cooling the server room and uh, please don't forget to like share and subscribe and then let's start welcome to the server room it may be the first time for most of you inside the server room as you may see the server room contains a lot of things that we are going to check together and talk about first of all I would like to tell you that the temperature inside the server room must be between 18 and 24 degrees Celsius more than this it will be considered dangerous on the equipment below here you may see that the floor is raised with what we call a raised floor. A raised floor. The raised floor is one of the most important parts of the server room as it allows the power cabling to pass underneath uh, the cabinets uh, in addition to the cooling that uh, also must come from underneath uh, the cabinets as well. As you may see here, this is the raised floor and this is the main uh, floor and here uh, you may see the cables passing from underneath the cabinets. As for the cooling of the server room, uh, the cold air comes out from underneath through the holes in the raised floor as you see here. The cold air goes up, the servers will suck out the cold air uh, in order to cool the server and the other equipment of course. Uh, after cooling, it will, uh, the, the, through the fans of the servers and the equipment, the cold air will go out of the, uh, from the back of the cabinet. Uh, as uh, hot air, uh, the ACs will get this hot air and cool it again and then send it back uh, from underneath in order to complete the circuit. Uh, what we see here are the, uh, what we call cabinets. Uh, the cabinets carry the servers and other equipment in the server room. Uh, the server cabinets usually come with uh, 1 meter depth and 60 or 80 meter, uh, 80, sorry, uh, 60 or 80 centimeter uh, as width. Uh, uh, as you may see here, this is uh, a 60 centimeter and this is an 80 centimeter. Uh, the only difference between the, the both cabinets, you see inside, this is the 60 centimeter and this is the 80 centimeters. The only difference is this. Uh, space here in the 8 centimeter cabinet that allows you to pass your cables uh, in, in more easy way. As for the height of the cabinets, it's calculated by the unit U. Uh, this, these cabinets are 42 U each uh, and the cabinets are marked uh, in, inside as you can see here 30, 31, uh, 32. This is each one of, the, of, the, of these uh, uh, numbers is considered as uh, a U. The marks are from uh, the front and back of the cabinet in order to uh, allow you to install your servers in a straight horizontal way. Uh, cabinets may come uh, smaller than the 42U, but usually inside the server room, we use the 42 cabinets from the beginning in order to be able to uh, grow with the servers and install more equipment without the need to change the cabinet itself. Because when you want to change the cabinet itself, you know, you, you have to turn off your equipment, you have to turn off your server, your, your, your storage, and then uh, move, it, uh, move it out of the cabinet and to uh, the new cabinet, which will uh, cost you uh, downtime. Uh, something that you don't want to, uh, to have in, 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 uh, in your server room. The servers uh, or, and the storages and other equipments may come with, uh, with a size of 1U, 2Us, uh, 3Us, it depends on, uh, uh, on, on the model, it depends on the uh, product itself. Uh, the, the servers may be tower servers, uh, such as this one which looks like a normal PC, or maybe a rack mount servers, such as these servers that are installed on their rail in, in the cabinet and that they, uh, they can uh, be uh, moved as uh, the, uh, a drawer, you know, like this, you can see this one, see this is moved as a drawer. 
As well, the cabinet may hold uh, other equipment such as uh, the switches, the Wi-Fi controller, uh, or any other equipment that are necessary to be in the server room. Uh, also, as you may see, we have a lot of servers that may be installed in, inside one cabinet. So, how do you reach these servers? It's not uh, practical to uh, have a, a, a monitor and a, a keyboard and mouse to be moved within the, uh, the servers when, when we want to access each one. Uh, the, here, where it, uh, the role comes for the KVM. Maybe uh, some of you will be the first time to see the KVM. As you can see, it's like a drawer. I can open it. And as you may see, we have a touch mouse. Here, we have a keyboard and a monitor. Uh, through this, I can access the servers. Uh, and at the same time, here we can see the KVM switch, what we call the KVM switch. The KVM switch will allow me to uh, move along uh, among the servers. I can choose which server to go, uh, one, two, three, four, five, etc. This KVM switch can hold up to 16 uh, servers, uh, as you can see. Uh, some KVM switches may uh, uh, hold more than this, some may hold less than this. It depends on the model and depends on the usage that you want to uh, have in your server room. Uh, he, see here, I am able to access the servers from a centralized place. This access for the server is called a console access. Uh, it's uh, when I uh, enter the server directly. This is a very uh, important terminology that you may hear in, in your work. It's a console access for the server. Now we go to the back of the cabinets where we will see the uh, networks, the switches, and the PDUs, uh, the power distribution unit uh, that plug where we plug our servers. Uh, the most important thing uh, uh, in the server room is the uh, redundancy. The PDUs at each cabinet are connected to two power sources, and each server has two power supplies, uh, each connected to a, a separate PDU. So that in case a certain uh, a power source uh, failed, as you see here, we have uh, two uh, power supplies in the server. And in case one of the uh, servers of the power sources uh, failed for any reason, the server will stay up and connected. Similarly, for the network equipment as well which also have uh, two power supplies in order to uh, keep up uh, and running. Uh, some switches may have single power supply, but uh, these switches will be used like this one. This one has a single power supply, uh, for example. Uh, but these, uh, these switches uh, usually uh, used to uh, connect uh, non-urgent, uh, uh, to have non-urgent connectivity, let's say. And we, we will talk about in uh, about that in uh, later videos. The servers as well, uh, as you may see here in the, the networking of the servers, are connected to uh, different uh, network uh, the switches uh, in the server room in order to allow them to stay connected even if one of the switches went down for any reason. As you may see here, we have two switches connected together, uh, what, uh, which what we call the stacked uh, together, uh, the, so that they are working as uh, one uh, uh, single switch, although they are uh, different, uh, two, uh, two different hardwares, but they are connected as one switch. In case one of the switches went down, it will not matter, because the servers will be uh, connected to both the switches, uh, so that we, uh, we stay, the server will stay connected to its environment no matter what happens, even if one power source went down or uh, even if one network switch went down. Talking more about the redundancy, as we see, as we say, we have two uh, power sources as well as we have uh, two uh, ACs. I'm closing the cabinet now. Uh, we have two ACs and two UPSs. See, this is one UPS with its batteries, and this is another UPS with its own batteries. Uh, we have two different UPSs, 
uh, also as redundancy we have two different uh, uh, air conditions uh, that uh, uh, are ready to cool the, uh, the server room uh, in case one of them went down they, they actually because they work 24 hours so they one uh, one of them will turn off and the other will uh, start will uh, stay on and they will switch places uh, in case one of them uh, went uh, down for any reason the other will stay up and connected until the first the, uh, the damaged one is fixed the ACs of the server room uh, are different from the normal ACs they are high compressed uh, they uh, compress the air, the air with, uh, um, with more uh, higher compression than the normal AC and they send the cool air from underneath the cabinets as we uh, talked earlier. Inside the server room as well we have a firefighting system uh, that's specialized for the server room. Uh, also, uh, uh, we, uh, I would like to tell you finally uh, that the server room must be secured enough to allow only uh, permitted uh, persons to enter. Uh, that's why inside the server room we'll have a surveillance system. As you see here, we have two cameras. Uh, they they uh, watch who entered the server room and what they did inside the server room. As well, when I enter the server room through this door, no one can enter from outside unless you are a committed person. So uh, you, uh, you, we will have a lock that is connected to uh, uh, maybe a fingerprint or a card control or maybe face recognition. It depends on the, uh, on, on the company itself. Well, this was all about the server room. I hope it was good enough for you. Please don't hesitate to ask any question. I'm waiting for your uh, comments, my friends. And please don't forget to like, share and subscribe.